Purpose computing is a horrible way of doing generative AI. And you can see that in just a second. And so we created a brand new processor for the era of generative AI. And this is it. This is the Grace Hopper. We announced Grace Hopper, in fact, just only recently, several months ago. And today we're announcing that we're going to give it a boost. We're going to give this processor a boost with the world's fastest memory called HBM3E. The world's fast memory now, fastest memory now connected to Grace Hopper. We're calling it GH200. This processor is designed for scale out of the world's data centers. It has 72 cores. Grace CPU core is connected through this incredibly high speed link, cache coherent, memory coherent link between the CPU and the GPU. This is the CPU, and that's the GPU. The Hopper GPU is now connected to HBM3E. It has four petaflops of transformer engine processing capability. And now it has five terabytes per second of HBM3E performance. So this is the new GH200, based on the architecture, Grace Hopper, and a processor for this new computing era. There's a whole lot of ways that we can connect Grace Hopper into a computer. This is one of my favorites. By connecting two of them into one computing node, connecting it together with MVLink, and this MVLink between these, between these two processor modules is six terabytes per second. And it basically turns these two, these two processors, these two superchips, into a supersized superchip. One giant GPU, one giant CPU. The CPU now has 144 cores, 10 terabytes per second of frame buffer bandwidth, and 282 gigabytes of HBM3E. Well, pretty much you could take just about any large language model you like and put it into this, and it will inference like crazy. The inference cost of large language models will drop significantly because look how small this computer is. And you could scale this out in the world's data centers because the servers are really, really easy to scale out. You can connect this with Ethernet. You can connect it with InfiniBand. And of course, um, there's all kinds of different ways that you can scale it out. Let's take a look at what it means if you were to scale it, take this, and now scale it up into a giant system. This is two GPUs. But what if we would like to scale this up into a much, much larger GPU? the world's largest single GPU. One exaflops, four petaflops per Grace Hopper, 256 connected by MVLink into one giant system. Two million, two million users, I think, 50,000 companies engage, hugging face. There's some 275,000 models, 50,000 data sets. So today we're announcing that Hugging Face is going to build a new service to enable their community to train directly on NVIDIA DGX Cloud. NVIDIA DGX Cloud is the best way to train models. And its footprint is being set up, our DGX Cloud footprints are being set up in Azure, OCI, Oracle Cloud, and GCP. But you want to do this in the cloud, but you might also want to do this um, everywhere else. And how do you build that infrastructure for yourself? And so the second thing we're announcing today is the NVIDIA AI Workbench. NVIDIA AI Workbench streamlines selecting foundation models, building your project environment, and fine-tuning these models with domain-specific data. Here, AI Workbench is installed on a GeForce RTX 4090 laptop, where we've been experimenting with an SDXL project. As our project gets more complex, we need much more memory and compute power. So we use AI Workbench to easily scale to a workstation powered by four NVIDIA RTX 6000 ADA generation GPUs. AI Workbench automatically creates your project's environment, building your container with all dependencies, including Jupyter. Now, in the Jupyter Notebook, we prompt our model to generate a picture of Toy Jensen in space. But because our model has never seen Toy Jensen, it creates an irrelevant result. 
To fix this, we fine-tune the model with 8 images of Toy Jensen, then prompt again. The result is much more accurate. Then, with AI Workbench, we deploy the new model in our enterprise application. With NVIDIA AI Workbench, you can easily scale your generative AI projects from laptop to workstation to data center or cloud with a few clicks. Well, what makes it possible to do all this is this other piece of code called NVIDIA AI Enterprise. This is essentially the operating system of modern data science and modern AI. It starts with data processing, data curation, and, and just you know, data processing represents some 40, 50, 60 percent of the amount of computation that is really done before you do the training of the model. So data processing, then training, then inference and deployment, all of those libraries, there are 4,500 different packages that are inside the NVIDIA AI Enterprise with 10,000 dependencies. Okay, so NVIDIA AI Enterprise is what makes NVIDIA AI Workbench even possible in the first place. Now we have these incredible models that are in hugging face that are pre-trained and open sourced, we can now train them and fine tune them on AI Workbench. You could run it anywhere because of AI Enterprise. Now we just need some powerful machines. We have powerful machines in the cloud, of course. DGX Cloud has many, many, uh, many footprints around the world. But wouldn't it be great if you had a powerful machine under your desk? And so today we're announcing our latest generation Ada GPU, Ada Lovelace GPU. Thank you. It goes into these amazing workstations. It packs up to four NVIDIA RTX 6000s, the most powerful GPUs ever, ever created, and it run real-time ray tracing for Omniverse, as well as train, fine-tune, and inference large language models. Uh, you could fine-tune GPD-3, 40 billion parameter GPD-3 in about 15 hours on nearly a billion tokens. And so you could take your proprietary data, your curated data. Um, you could maybe uh, bring you know, all of your PDFs. And you could fine tune this model before you uh, ask it, uh, prompts, prompt it, and ask it questions. Um, it produces answers in seconds, not minutes uh, for in some of the services that are out there. Okay, And so uh, another incredible machine are the servers. And these servers. As you know, getting GPUs in the cloud these days is no easy feat. And there's a whole bunch of these servers, a whole bunch of different configurations. I don't know if you guys could see this. This, this is a server that has up to eight of uh, the L40S Ada Lovelace GPUs. Um, these are really used for mainstream models today that you can download from Hugging Face. And you could fine tune it with these GPUs. The fine tuning of a GPT-3 model, okay, so this is GPT-3, GPT 40 billion parameters, takes about seven hours for about a billion tokens. And so 15 hours in a workstation with four GPUs, of course, takes less with eight GPUs. And just in fine tuning, this is one and a half times faster than our last generation A100. And so L40S is a really terrific GPU for enterprise scale fine tuning of mainstream large language models. You can also use it for, for course, uh, synthesizing and generating Im images. OpenUSD is a very big deal. SIGGRAPH 2023 is all about OpenUSD. OpenUSD is visionary, and it's going to be a game changer. OpenUSD is a framework, a universal interchange for creating 3D worlds, for describing for compositing, for simulating, for collaborating on 3D projects. Well, five years ago, we started working with Pixar, and we adopted USD as the foundation of Omniverse. Our vision was to create this, these virtual worlds that make it possible for us to bring world design into the applications that I mentioned, industrial digitalization at the core of many things that we want to do, not just for, of course, creating amazing movies and broadcast and video games, but also to take 3D worlds, physically based, real time, into the world's industries. Well, for the last five years, we've been working on, uh, Omniverse has been building and working, collaborating with the industry on USD. Let's take a look at 
This, everything you're about to see is a simulation. Everything is real time. And so take a look at this. This is the latest of Omniverse. also use Omniverse to create a digital twin. NVIDIA is creating a digital twin of the Earth, the climate system of the Earth. Deutsche Bahn is using Omniverse to create a digital twin of their entire railway network so they could operate it completely in digital. Now, in order for that to happen, Omniverse has to be real time. Let's see how you can use NVIDIA Omniverse and generative AI to connect your OpenUSD to fast track planning concepts, like a storage extension to an existing factory. Use SyncTwin's Omniverse extension to quickly convert a 2D CAD floor plan into a 3D open USD model. And populate it with sim ready open USD assets using Omniverse's AI enabled deep search. Then use prompts to generate physically accurate lighting options with Blender GPT. Realistic floor materials with Adobe Firefly. and an HDRI Skydome with Blockade Labs. To see the new space in context, compose it on a cesium geospatial plane next to your existing factory digital twin. Then, to share with stakeholders, use one click to publish the proposal to Omniverse Cloud GDN. It started with a 2D PowerPoint slide, and it ended with a virtual factory in spatial computing. That is incredible. PowerPoint to a virtual factory. 2D to spatial 3D. So this is the future. This is the future, and this is how everything comes together. USD, of course, is foundational in that journey, and Omniverse foundational in that journey, and generative AI. I want to thank all of you for coming today. We talked about SIGGRAPH 2023 for us is four things. It's about the transition of a new computing model. The very first time in decades that the computing architecture is going to be fundamentally redesigned from the processor to the data center to the middleware, the AI algorithms, and the applications that it enables. The processor we created for this era of accelerated computing and generative AI is Grace Hopper, and we call it GH200. We have NVIDIA AI Workbench to make it possible for all of you to be able to engage generative AI. NVIDIA Omniverse now has a major release with generative AI and, of course, release and support for OpenUSD. And then finally, whether you want to compute in the cloud or do AI in your company underneath your desk or in your data center, we now have incredibly powerful systems to help you all do that. Mm -hmm.